All right. <laughs> and good morning and afternoon and evening wherever you guys are. And a big happy birthday to Jared in snowy Chicagoland. Hello, Yvette and Amy. Thank you guys for joining us. Always a pleasure to see you. I feel like I get to see you more than once every week. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so I hope you guys are all doing well, staying warm in this crazy weather we're having here, and all sorts of stuff freezing up and power going out and whatnot. So stay warm, okay? Stay safe, stay warm. But don't forget, you got to keep going out and photographing no matter what. All right, so well, let's just kind of get this party started. So I'm Mark Silver, an author and photographer in Carmel, California. And I just want to let you know that the show is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo Lab. I really love these guys. I'll, I'll tell you, I've been working with them for years. I know the CEO. I, I first started getting my prints made when they were in a tiny little space in Santa Cruz, California. And now they have an enormous space. They were really just a local outfit. Now they're in, I don't know if they're in, yeah, I'm sure they're international, but they're for sure national. And uh, Smug Mug uses them and various different platforms use them. They're awesome. They'll give you great customer service. 21% off on prints and mounting. This is always a good thing, you know. Not just getting a print made, but get, get it mounted for sure. I prefer getting frames made, but why not get it mounted at least? And you've got different options here, 20% off. There's a code there. These thin wraps are cool. You hang them on the wall, and that has a really cool look to it. And then drum scans. If you got negatives, you want a really, really high-quality scan. My my philosophy about scanning is use the best scanner you can possibly get. You only want to do it once. You do not want to run your negatives through different scanners. Just find the best quality, get it done. It's preserved. You've got it. It's digitized. And that is, as far as I know, this is like top of the line here. Uh, the, their drum scans, 20% off. So do your guy, do yourself a favor. Get over there. Get something ordered from Bay Photo, and you'll get, no matter what, your first order, you get 25% off. Okay. So I always tell you guys a story. Let's say hello to some other people. Steven, we were just chatting. Good to see you here. Back of me, happy birthday, Jared, says he. And there's uh, Kasaba. I, I love seeing all you guys. Uh, Ellen, Spanish Institute. Who is this? Antonio. Okay. Are you? I think uh, you might be new to us. Anyway, thanks for joining us, you guys. So, you know, I always start off with a story. This one's a bit sad. Uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, that's not the right screen. Sorry here, folks. Good friend of mine, Chick Corea, passed away this week. Um, amazing artist. I don't know if you're a jazz aficionado, but he is a giant in the jazz space. I'm just going to give you an idea. This was a photograph I took of him. If you look closely, you have to really look closely to see it, but you'll see, whoa, sorry, faces there. You can't see it that well because it's just not big enough. Okay, let me see if I can get zoom in there. Okay. Yeah, you can see faces in the audience here. I was backstage. This is the Monterey Jazz Festival a few years ago. Chick Korea, let me just give you an idea of his the magnitude of his accomplishments. Out of 90 albums, think about that, nine zero albums, he was nominated 67 times for Grammy Awards. Think about that. Over two-thirds of his albums were nominated, and he won 23 times. He's actually up for two more Grammys this year, which I can't imagine he won't win. So that would give him a total of 25 Grammy Awards. 
25. I mean, this is like, there's only a few other artists uh, who, who have even come close to that. 25. Um, you were his drummer in a past life. Yeah, I bet. He's a, now, here's the thing about Chick. Um, he is known for being playful. This is an article written about him from uh, Grammy, the Grammy site. And they said in here, um, you know, he didn't, when he talked about music, he didn't talk about all the, uh, you know, the intricacies of music and the technical side of things. He said, this is a quote from him, trust yourself to say, I don't know what I'm going to do next but I'm just going to do it because it's fun. And Chick was guided by this incredible playfulness, which I highly recommend to all of us to, you know, employ, find that, that spirit of play that, you know, where you wake up in the morning when you're a kid and you just couldn't wait to get out of bed and go see what was going on. And, you know, we, we all have to rediscover that. So, Chick stands as a legend. So back to some of my photographs, just briefly. So this again was taken backstage, uh, and I put it up because it's kind of like his final bow. This was uh, sorry, Chick and Herbie Hancock, another absolute amazing pianist. Both of them played with Miles Davis. Now, if you're anywhere near the jazz space, you know Miles is sort of the god of, of of jazz i mean in my in my world the guy was just unbelievably good and herbie hancock is just phenomenal anyway i had the pleasure of being backstage and witnessing this conversation these guys cracking up it's fun shooting backstage because you get to see stuff that nobody else sees you know and you get you get in on these conversations Capture these moments. You never know when you're going to use them. I use this in my book, Create. I use this in a uh, one of my films called Imagine, just because those hands can do magic. They really can. A lot of people don't realize that Chick also played classical music, and he started when he was four years old. To him, it's just a language he learned when he was four, and it was he just kept growing from there. So, you know, the, the point of this story is capture those moments. If you ever have the opportunity to get backstage with your camera, take it. If you can't get backstage, just get a telephoto lens at a concert. Um, but it's not just about concerts. It's about making sure that you are photographing your friends. You're in those moments because it's going to have definite meaning and uh, it's going to go a long ways at some point. You're going to be able to use it in, in, in your work, building your library. Okay, well, let's take a look at you guys. Let's take a look at your work. And Jared, are we ready to roll here? Sounds like your mic might not be connected. But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head on over. I don't know why we're not hearing you there. Can we hear you on this screen? Your mic should be connected, Jared, but I'm not hearing you. Okay, well, so let's see what's going on here, Jared. You want to shoot me a message if you're not... I, I, for some reason, you're muted. At this, at this end, you're not muted. I have my unmute button on your screen here. Okay, well, so this is John Morgan. I... Don't know if you're present or not. John, if you are, let us know. A very interesting, uh, looks like a lamp inside a bamboo frame. Uh, Jared is calling me. Hang on a second, you guys. Jared, hi. I'm in the green room. Okay, sorry, I'll get you out of there. He's in the green room. He's been left in the green room. So there we go. <laughs> Now he's out of the green room. Can you, can you talk now? Okay, guest is in green room. Sorry, folks. Remove, on, remove from green room. Hang on, folks. I'm not sure why he's supposed to be in here. 
and he is not there. Hang on. So, Jared, can you hear me now? Technical difficulties behind the scenes. Here we go. So, normally I'd have Jared uh, chat at you while you're... <laughs> okay, here we go. So, remove from green room. Now we should be able to hear you, Jared. Hey, can you hear me? There we are. Okay, sorry okay. about that, folks. Okay. Everyone. Uh, the and, magic of being uh, in a live YouTube with us. You get to see the things that go on when we screw up. Or yeah, more precisely, sure I screw that up. They can see, see more of our wonderful live stream abilities. They should definitely uh, subscribe, I think. That's true. Oh, yes, we didn't talk about it. He would have reminded me. And be sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of these mess ups because you never know what's going to come around the corner. And enable the bell. We have a lot of fun. We have fun. Uh, and so in the meantime, quick, uh, the quick spiel, because I was asking, um, the way that you can get your, uh, your images uh, submitted for today is to join the AYP Club, which I am going to be putting a link to. Uh, and it is not too late to submit your photos. So join the AYP Club and submit your images. So yes, this first image is from John Morgan. Uh, this is part of a series that he's currently working on, uh, and the series is called, let me pull up my notes, um, the series here is called uh, Sources of Light Project. Uh, Interesting. So, he, uh, so he's got a, a variety of different ones. This was a series in the series where he used uh, wicker baskets. Yeah, okay, that's a wicker. All right, so that's interesting. And, I, you know, hey, series are fun, and you can add to them every time you find another light source. Cool. I mean, it, it's, it's part of a series. It tells a part of a story, and, uh, y you know, you, you captured it the way you did. I don't know if you got other... Uh, captures where you were maybe perhaps back a little bit further to see the whole thing but it's you know it's an interesting and intriguing design and the you know the color kind of draws you in so that works okay and uh, kind of blue I'm just noticing some of your comments Ronald you saw him in St. Louis in 72 yeah he's been around a long time I think he uh, we're back to Chick Corea here for a second I think he joined Miles Davis in like uh 1962 something like that i mean chick had an amazing career think about it he started playing piano when he was four years old so he had 74 years of playing piano and mastering that instrument just shows you and you know jan and i were taking a walk yesterday because we both know him really well and <clears throat> she said you know the thing about chick is he just practiced a lot he practiced a lot. Now, think about that, you guys. <laughs> 23 Grammy Awards, 90 albums, and he practiced a lot. So it's just, ah, what we need to do, you know, to master our, our craft. It's, we have to be practicing. We have to use our equipment. We, you know, have to practice our visualization. We have to, you know, know more about editing. It's just a continuous process of upward Spiral of learning. Okay, end of my advertisement for you, for the amount of practice we need to do. Okay, so who's next right. here, Jared? Uh, I'll pull up the next one. As a technical note, I think you might want to move the microphone just a little further away from you. It's just a little hot. Well, uh, what do you know? Okay, hot microphone. Yeah, which is usually not our problem. So I know. <laughs> usually it's uh, too quiet. Every day we get to face a new set of circumstances. Yeah. Here's a fun one. This one is from Antonio, uh, at, who I believe is Spanish Institute, if I remember correctly. Oh, yes. Um, and this was taken, let's see, this was taken with a bellows extension tube and LED light at F14 iOS 12, uh, 1250 uh, during, during the stay at home. So they found this while they were at home. You sure it's not F1.4? 
Uh, that might be it. It might be it. It might have been. I bet it was missing. Depth. It's got to be because look at the depth of field is super, super, yeah, right. super shallow. Uh, so I mean, it's, oh, it's, and then, it's uh, one uh, two fifty for shot. Yeah. Speed. Okay. That is a very cool image. Um, you know, it's just <laughs> we're, we're looking at this tarantula. Looks like I didn't yeah, realize they had some thing. Four sets of eyes. That's pretty amazing. It's like an iPhone. Uh, iPhone only has three, and then it has the flash, but it's a total of four. But the green, you know, your your incredible use of depth of field is is spectacular. Because, you know, really it just draws your eye right to that creature and the green surrounding it. It's it's just pretty remarkable how you've carefully capture that so bravo to you it's amazing i have never ever used a bellows uh and uh, i admire i admire your use of it and your uh precision of focus because that's not easy if that if that creature moved think about it you know five millimeters forward or back something starts to go out of focus i mean you really have that precisely focused so bravo well done all right. Uh, here's one from Ellen. Uh, this is from her archives. Uh, let's see. Uh, she took this. This was in Colombia in a working class neighborhood from her 35 millimeter archives. Well, good for you. So, Ellen, this is a great photograph. You know, it, it's got a lot of cool elements in it. Of course, we're drawn immediately to the little boy. I love the window being open and the two people framed within the window. Frames within frames. And I'm a big fan of this. We've got the leading line of the road and the, you know, the very old fashioned car. There's a lot of there's a lot for our eyes to kind of feast on here. Um, the guys over on the corner, Coca-Cola, no matter where you go, there's the Coca-Cola sign. The leading line down the road. I mean, there's just a lot going on. Um, you know, the, oh, there's also leading lines to the boy. There's a, a bunch because you've got the, the sill there and the edge of the frame forms its own set of frames. And there's a reflection of him in the window. Bravo. You have got all sorts of cool things going on with this image. And the fact that you shot it with film is a bonus. So... You've got him very vibrant. You know, you've got his colors uh, popping out. The rest of it is a bit muted, which is actually fine because it kind of helps us, again, identify him and draw our eyes to him. And that orange line that goes right to him, sort of on the edge of the window, the inside line there. Very, very good. Very well done. This is a very strong and well-made image. Excellent. Um, Ellen actually has a question quick about 35 uh, millimeter archives. Uh, I find my faces fuzzier in 35 millimeter archives, not too fuzzy. Not sure exactly what she means by that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So I'm not sure. I, I was going to comment on that, and then I discarded that thought because it doesn't matter. Cartier Bresson said, "Focus is bourgeois." You know, because if you look at a lot of his photographs they are not super sharp and uh, I think his point is it's more important to capture the moment than to obsess over sharpness of focus but if you have a technical thing going on like in other words if you shot that I don't know what you shot it with it was it Kodachrome or Ektachrome or Kodacolor negative uh, slide, uh, slide film or negative film but if it's not rendering like, in other words, if the negative itself was sharp, and then when it's scanned, it's not rendering as sharp, that's a problem in your scanner, and it would be good to rescan it and get rid of that problem. Send it to Bay Photo and have them do a professional scan on it. But anyway, maybe you could answer that question. Is this a, are, we, are you talking about a problem of how the scanner rendered it? Uh, or what's the, what's the deal there? Anyway, let us know. We'll I'll answer or we'll address that a little bit further as we go along. 
um, you know, the scanner should render a perfectly sharp image if it was sharp at the time you, you shot it. it. You know, all the scanner is going to do is, is take what's there and make it into a digital. So, you know, if, if, if what was there was, was not sharp, okay, that's fine. But yeah, uh, slide old Nikon, we'll check scanning. Yeah, check it out, because if you, again, if you look at your original print and it's, the boy's face is really sharp, then it just means that the, the negative wasn't flat enough. You know, if it bows up a little bit when it's being scanned, it's going to go out of focus, just like anything else. Just remember, it's using a process that's like taking a picture of it when it scans it. So, you know, it has to be in focus. I, I think if that's your issue, just re get it rescanned. But check it out. Yeah, check it out, Ellen. Send it to Bay Photo Lab. They'll give you an, a perfect scan. Huge. Okay, so. All right. Our next one. This is Saba. Uh, and uh, the story behind this one is um, he said that this is Halloween kid. Although my son is comfortable when I photograph him, he rarely asks to have photos taken. Uh, but this was a special case for Halloween. Um, he had painted his face and asked to take him shots of him. Uh, and so he started acting, playing, singing, and screaming like me. Uh, that this was a very fun moment to share with him. I think that's very cool. You know, you got that moment, and it's you, you never know what it is just by looking at it. It's just like, what is going on? There's some story here. And, you know, the black and white with all the, the dark spaces, you know, the negative space of it being dark is, you know, creating a mystery. So that adds to the mystery of the photograph. You know, it's very intriguing. Like, what is the story here? So good job. I mean, you, you, you captured a moment. You're showing it to us. Incredible expression of is it fear is it anger you know it's kind of a mixture but i you know knowing what you just told us we we have a better insight into it but the photograph itself just just portrays this emotion and you know the use of um the the arms being up like that that's that's that creates its own kind of emotion as well this is called a mood line and these mood lines are are, are sort of giving you this this feeling of motion. Now, one of the things we always strive for in a photograph, it's a two-dimensional still image. But whenever you can kind of break through and create space, this isn't so much about space, it's about motion. Whenever you create motion or action or vitality in it, and that's a diagonal line that does that, you, you've, you've brought more life to the photograph. So... Good job. Um, and he asked that we take a quick look at the other two because it, it is a sequence. Sure. So we'll just bring them. They're, they're very similar. So this is the second photo in the sequence. Okay. And then this is the third photo, which I do enjoy the third photo. Yeah, I like the first and the third. You know, if I were picking them, I'd take those two. But the first, I think you chose the right one as far as your initial yeah. Yeah, I'd go with either the first or the third. The one in the middle is sort of okay, whatever. But this one, they're both these are much stronger images. Yeah. I like that last one a lot. That one's good. It's like again, what is going yeah. on here? Same sort of motion, same same sort of, you know, with the angle there getting vitality into the image. Okay. All right. Uh our next photo, this is from Bert, who's had a chance. To hey Bert. get into some indoor track. Uh, it says indoor track is over, and I've never got to shoot this year, so I think this was last year. Was nice to hear from fans that they missed my photos this year. A uh, few from last year. Looks like I could get to shoot basketball this year. First games next week, but the weather will control that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Amazing pole vault going on here. She's about to launch over something, and boy, is she intent. I mean, that's a wild angle 
And, you know, without it, without it being a still photograph, you might just miss how far that pole bends. I didn't realize that there was that much bend in that in those poles because yeah. you see it in just a snap. Right. You know, when somebody goes mm -hmm. over the pole. But this is like you, you got to probably at the maximum amount of bend there and her legs. Look at that. She's just horizontal. Very cool. Very cool. Capturing that moment. And she's Navy. Yeah, no, that's just yes. spot on. Well done. All right. Again, that's another angle showing motion, and you've got depth in there. So, you, you know, whenever we do that, we're just we're just adding that that feeling that you're you're seeing more than just a single still image. You're seeing this motion. You know, you're part of a motion. You know, you're you're part of something that's going on there. So, bravo. All right, this one is from our photojournalist friend, Jeremy, uh, and he was going through a bunch of his photos that he had taken uh, from the Black Lives Matter protests, uh, which he photographed extensively, and he decided to take a couple of those images and do some square crops with them just uh -huh. to you know, experiment a bit. So this is one of the sure. square crops that he took. You reminded me of something, Jared. Um I posted this, uh, Amy, Amy uh, put up some images yesterday in our AYP Plus group, and I put a quote from Edward Weston. Maybe you could dig that out, Jared, while we're... Sure. Put it in the comments, and then I'll put it on the screen, because it's a really great quote about experimenting. And so, okay, listen, this is a very interesting image. It's, you know, it's well captured. You, you frame the horse, not, you know, right within this. This is Chicago, right? With the, with the L? Sure looks oh, like it. To, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know where this no, is. You're here. Where was it? <laughs> okay. Anyway, urban setting, street setting with a horse is already like, what is going on here? And you know your your subject framed within these posts is um, very cool. You've got the shadow, you know, got a shadow off the horse. It's just a very interesting image, and it's you know I see your photojournalistic. Yeah, downtown Chicago under the L. Yeah, exactly. Juxtaposition. Come on, who sees horses in Chicago? Right, Jared? I don't know. Maybe you see them all the time. I'm. I've never seen a horse in Chicago, <laughs> so uh, it's it is juxtaposition. Yeah, there there we go. Um, so the experimenting. Let's put that on the screen here. This is from Edward West, and I would say to any artist, don't be repressed in your work. Dare to experiment. Consider any urge, if in a new direction, all the better. So. I love that quote. Let's experiment. We're never going to know what we can move into if we don't experiment. You know, you remember our discussion with Peter Asher about the Beatles. I mean, they experimented with everything. Everything. You know, the way they recorded, the way their albums looked, the way they dressed, the, you know, the, the subject matter of their songs, everything. They were just constantly pushing the boundary and, you know, cutting edge. And, you know, the greatest people in our culture are those who push the boundaries, who who bring us new stuff. Steve Jobs, you know, new way of thinking about, you know, okay, instead of just this phone, you know, that you call people on, he, he turned it into this entire device. Of course, then it got, you know, every other phone maker got into the game, but he was the first one to envision that. There were already cell phones and there were already devices called PDAs, which is personal digital assistant. But he put it together into one device and, you know, it's a revolution. And it took great photographs. Anyway, keep pushing the edge. Keep pushing it. Yes, usually mounted police is what you would think of, not, not civilians going around on horses. All right. You All get right. the feeling the uh, horse is moving sideways. You're right. I think it is. It like it's backing up, and maybe the subject 
saw, I don't know, could be, you're right, though, I do have that feeling, too, like it's, it's doing a little backup there. Yeah, it could well be. Like Doesn't look like it's moving, going. That one's just finishing moving. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, excellent. All right. That one, uh, one image provoked all that conversation. How about that? Here's a fun one. This is from Emmanuel. Uh, to the current is the name of the photo. I waited for. Uh, the bustards to arrive in front of the ship to take the picture. I thought that it was very symbolic to see nature and progress taking opposite directions. Yeah, that's very cool. And the, the fact that you you got both of them in the frame, and absolutely, yes, we have you know this tanker going in one direction and all these ducks going in a different one. That's what you call getting your ducks in a row. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Couldn't resist it. But those ducks are in a row. You know, that expression has a lot of meaning because if those ducks weren't in a row, it wouldn't be the photograph that it is. Let's say they're all scattered around. Some of them were flying and some of them were in, you know, behind the tanker or whatever. But you have all your ducks in a row and that's very, makes it a really cool image. And the fact that you, you uh, process it as a black and white, it's a very sort of dreamy, you know, almost like hazy uh, behind it. And rather timeless, you know. Could this have mm -hmm. been in the 1950s? Sure. Could it have been 70s? Yeah. Could it have been the 30s or 20s? Yes. So it's very timeless, which is also makes it more interesting. So there's this the space thing, a foreground, ducks, middle ground, tanker, background, cliffs, you know, again, that gives you different layers and that gives you space. It uh, looks like a photo that you would see hanging up in like an office, you know, uh -huh. it, it's just got that really nice quality. You know, it's yeah. just something that you could stare at for a while and just really enjoy looking at it. It's very cool. And you get the feeling of motion. Again, there's some diagonal lines going on there, you know, in the water itself and the boat and the... Uh, and the ducks so it gives you a feeling of motion which is awesome All guys right. are hitting home runs i love it this next one this is from wayne uh isabella and her pentax recently oh, acquired a few film cameras and this one uh and this one took a liking to a few so a future photographer potentially taking a look at icon z6 in my studio not and the softbox on the left acting, acting as a bounce card. What it, now? Tell me what is what is that in the background again? With this acting as a bounce card, or is it uh, something in the foreground? No, it read, was on read the read left. Read that again. Uh, softbox on the left axing, oh, acting acting as a bounce card. Oh, okay. So it's not really actually turned on. I see it. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just reflecting light. Yeah. No, that's very cute, and it's you know. They, again, we started the show by saying, I started by saying, you know, let's capture that, ch you know, childlike wonder. And that's what you've got there. This is very cool. And the angles in it make it interesting, you know, the angle of, the, now I know what it is. It's a stand for the softbox. I wouldn't have known that. And the, you know, the angle of the softbox there, it's, it's good. And, you know, that all adds up. And the cuteness of the, you know, the little... <laughs> Unicorn and whatever that other creature is. Uh, it's Peppa the Pig. Peppa very, the Pig. Very popular uh, with uh, kids. I missed that one. Anyway, teaching kids to photograph early is a good thing. I've taught one of my grandsons. I have a video of it, actually. Teaching him a Fuji. Uh, and he went around. And he tried to make the trees cheese. He knows about cheese. <laughs> he says, I, the trees didn't cheese. <laughs> you know, when you cheese, you go like that, right? Anyway, <laughs> um, that's cute. That's a really, really cool picture. And the black and white, I think, works beautifully. Yeah, how you can see her one eye. That's kind of cool, right? She's looking right through that. And the fact that it's an Asahi Pentax. That's a vintage camera, by the way. Asahi Pentax. That was the brand before it just became Pentax. I had one of those. 
not that exact camera, but very similar. Very cool. All right. This next one. This open. Natural light street photography. You know who that reminds me of? Is uh, Bambi Cantrell did. We did a show with her. Um, Because she does. She takes a lot of photographs of current fashion. Not so much. This is. This is a. You know, I'm I'm not trying to, I never want to compare your guy's work with somebody else. It just was a reminder of, of something she did. But, uh, you know, here we are, frames within frames. I love this. You've got, you know, the mannequin, but right inside her is this, fra- you know, really clear ref- reflection of the street with a lot of, what are those little specks there? Oh, that's on her. Oh, yeah. It's like sequence on the dress. Isn't that interesting? It looks like a bunch of, I thought, wow, it must be some celebration. It looked like confetti or something. But it's on her, her, her dress. And, but look how sharp he is. And look at the frame next to you know, her, where you've got kind of the muted um, guy walking through. And that's a really awesome photograph. I'm a big fan, if you haven't already noticed this, of frames within frames. Diagonal lines, leading lines. You know, you got all sorts of stuff going on there. That's very cool. You know what intrigues me about this? Is we have a model, a mannequin, obviously modeling a, a dress, but, but somehow we're also looking at a water faucet. And that... I believe it's got to be a reflection, you know, or it's a very interesting store that's both selling water faucets and women's clothes. I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of an interesting mix of stuff that leaves you asking questions. Remember, that's really important in a photograph. Leave your viewer asking questions. What the heck is this? Because that's going to intrigue them. People get intrigued by mysteries and get drawn in by them so good job all right this one all right so this is from uh spaz on uh and so i shot an indoor athletics event this saturday i'm used to shooting motorsports and this was very alien and new to me also the lighting conditions were very poor which made my life even harder but I managed to pull out something of it, uh, and I even got a great response from the organizers and some of themselves. And I would say you did do a really good job. There's, uh, He's got a series of these photos, uh, and I can tell that you brought your F1 skills in there. But this was one of the photos that uh, I, you know, it's one of those I wish I took it myself photos. This is good. By the way, Spaz, I could... Use one of your images as an uh, example. Uh, we're, Jared and I are making this new class. Uh, f- you know, basically, it's taking this book newly and expanding it. And I need a racing scene. I don't have any racing oh, photographs. If myself. you want that, I'll bring up his, the one that he has, which you can tell. Yeah, and is... I, would, I would love to use it. Here's this one. That's cool. That he also it, took. I need a racing car though, an F1 or any oh, kind of then, car. then yeah, yeah, he's got his F1. I car. know you, you've you've seen some the red Ferrari, right? Uh, anyway, I love this. I love this image. I think it's just fantastic. There's a uh, a lot of emotion. There's a lot of uh, you know. Again, there's angles. You know, giving it motion. The fact that it's black and white, it works really well, and uh, boom. Yeah, it shows your range too, because this isn't just about red, bright cars, you know, you've you've or or color photograph. I mean, you're you're showing us a whole different range with your black and whites here. So that's excellent, awesome, great job. By the way, I may need some other examples of photographs if you guys maybe I'll post them in the AYP club because sometimes I don't I don't I mean I haven't shot everything there is to shoot. So, but I give an example you know, in my class. And I thought, you know, uh, I could use one of those. So Spaz, maybe you could just, uh, Jared, 
uh, you could reach out to us, AYP. I'll shoot you a message uh, yeah. on Bookspaz, and uh, we'll get in touch about using that photo. That'd be awesome. Okay. All right. Our next and that, photo. That could be for other guys too. I'll let you know what you know what we're missing. Yeah, we're we're finishing up. Uh, we're in the middle of a big project, so we'll have some requests. I'm sure. We'll have some requests. We'll just put them in the AYP Facebook group. Yep. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, so this is Rami. Uh, this is his photo. New portraits I've been using, uh, or I've been trying to get out and capture. Uh, so far, I think I like it with his new camera. Uh, and yep, that's. So this is one of the portraits that he took. So, okay, Rami, you know, shallow depth of field, obviously that's working really well. Shiny. Uh, her face is very well lit. It makes me think that it's late afternoon, but not in the golden hours. Maybe you could confirm what time you capture that. Um, which is, you know, not the easiest light to work with. But you you did it well because you didn't blow out any highlights her skin is all there you know and we've got the white of her teeth and her eyes the expression of looking away like she'd been looking straight in the lens it would be a totally different feeling but she's looking away at something which gives us that feeling of what is she looking at again that's leave your leave your viewer asking questions, you know, and that's working really well. And of course they're bright orange, but I'd be curious when this was shot, what time of day, you know, and you shot at a very shallow depth of field, probably 2.8. Um, she's, you know, in focus, but everything behind her is out of focus. Of course that works great. So good job. Good job. All right, here's one that Rachel just submitted. This was from a recent trip up to the coast. Yeah, there's your punctuation point, that gull sitting there. And the, the uh, hazy uh, sky behind the rocks. Looks like a long exposure, too, because it seems like we're seeing a lot of motion there, which is makes it interesting. And the black and white works really well. You've got you know the forms so this is this is almost like you know we're we're looking at forms here and that's great in uh any kind of landscape photograph again i'm thinking about what's in my book camille seaman is a fantastic landscape photographer and she talks about noticing forms and move around until the forms she says it's like choreography. You move around until the forms all line up. And that that's what you've got here. You've got a bunch of different forms, and you just move around until those forms all coincide with what your vision is. So good job, Rachel. Black and white definitely well, works. All right. This one is from Thomas. This is his first post in AYP Club, so welcome. <laughs> uh this was a three light setup and the image was made from two from a two shot composite. We're in Margaritaville, Alaska, Mexico. It's margarita time. Look at that. It's a perfect mar it's a perfect shot of a scene that you composed. And um, you know, this is this is really a classic. It could be an ad for the tequila but it it really is well put together it's a um you know it's just a little story and uh, many great photographers irving penn did a lot of these kind of he did them as ads but also his own uh little stories i think it's really great it's a still life you've got you know that compose you've got the sharpness right on the uh tequila bottle and we're seeing, you know, the salt and the knife and the li limes and everything that's within the frame is part of that story. And, and, and even the background looks, you know, adds the color of the green. Good job. It's telling us a little story in, a, in, in, in one frame. 
And again, that's what we're trying to do with our frames. And that's what you guys are doing. Tell a story. Give us something to think about, to look at, and wonder about. Whoa, who's going to have that drink? What time is it? Where are we? What's the occasion? You know, all these th sort of thoughts come to mind, which is great. And that's that what provokes a great image. All right. This one is from, this is from Jaya Krishna. I'm not uh, drinking no tequila, patchy. by the way. I'm drinking <laughs> bubbly water. A little too early for tequila here. Okay, cool. I love this right away. You know, I like the the guy leaning on the on the beach hut and the black and white. It's just pure design and uh, negative space in both the foreground and the background, which kind of leaves this band of what's going on here. It's a very intriguing image. It's very cool. And the that what makes it work is the guy leaning on the on the uh, sun, what do we call those, sun huts, I guess. Yeah. Because his angle, he's got a little angle there, a little attitude looking at a phone, it looks like. But it, you know, it gives it the, it gives us what we need. Without it, it could be interesting, you know, I just take that out, it's kind of interesting. But with the guy there, boom, it, it all falls in place because and then it, then it, I think the thing about, you know, why are punctuation points interesting? Because they put a life unit there for the most part. Punctuation point doesn't always have to be alive, but for the most part they are. They're animals or people. And again, our eyes just will gravitate to something alive. We feel natural affinity for life forms. And um, that's, that's what you have going on there. It's great. Good, good job. I love the work oh, you guys are doing. Oh, yeah. Such great photos. Uh, this one, this is from Eric. And uh, the title of this one is Partner. Who is what? I didn't catch that. Running Partner. Running Partner. Very cool. You know, you didn't mind cutting the top for a head off. No problem. I don't understand. I got criticized for people missing body parts and what rule book what rule book is that from bob holmes does it all the time all the you time you know all the time i mean what what rule book says you have to immediately have every piece of the person's body in the frame look a frame this is what you have you have a frame and you fill it the way you envision it that's your visualization and the way you fill it and the way you move that frame around is your art form. Anyway, well done. You've got all you've got a black and white photograph on the lower half and a color photograph on the upper half. That's tricky. You can't do that very often. And it's perfect. It it's even her arms are in the color portion of the frame, but down below the arm, it's black and white. That's amazing. That's really well done because we've got, again, we've got all this motion frames within frames. Uh, it's, the shadow is really cool. It's, it's, it's got a lot going on, and I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. All right. Our good, next good one, job. this is from Mache, and uh, let me – Pull it up. So we've got two versions of the same photo. So last photo of the day, handheld handheld shooting. It was very dark, taken when we were returning from a short walk, and then was wondering, is it too dark? Uh, is it better if I lighten it up? So this is the original photo. Yeah, uh, you and know, uh, Rachel, just, just you, you just photo. mentioned getting negative comments about uh, cropping. Okay, yeah. All right. So people are going to give us these things just like it's out of focus, you know. Well, we already dished that one out. You know, Cartier-Bresson said, eh, bourgeois, who cares? I guess that's what we need to do as artists. You know, when you have a vision, you just go with it. Okay. So what was the question? What is it? Let's see the so two the question versions. is, is the original too dark? So this is the original and this is lightened up a little bit. No, I actually like the original personally i mean we don't again we don't have to see it all and i 
my feeling is that was your original vision. Go with it. Uh, it's very subtle. I think bringing out, I'm, you, you know, when I have that shadow slider going, I'm cautious with it. Because sometimes I don't want to open up the shadows too much. You know, I don't want everything revealed. I don't, you know, this is, this is enough for me, right? Um, and the moon, that's super cool. So it's a very quiet feeling here that I get. Again, that's largely due to the mood lines. Uh, a circle just literally shows focus. I mean, that's an interesting thing about that as a mood line. It's give, it gives us the feeling of focus. And there's no question that, you know, in our own language, people talk about being centered. You know, and you get the feeling when you're centered, everything is kind of together the way it should, and it's quiet, it's calm. And that's what I get from this. I get almost like a Japanese painting, you know, Oriental painting. Um, in the, you know, obviously way into the blue hour. I mean, that blue sky is deep blue. That's the blue hour. Of course, it's blue many hours. So I think you've done, um, yeah, the dark has a lot of secrets. I think that's great. Let me just just flip it back for a second. I just want to do another comparison. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Much more interesting. Okay, good job. Just stick with the original. Yep. Uh, looks like we got a lot of people liking the original. Yeah. Uh, you there know, you a little go. bit of mix. But, uh, you know, that's it, it's what you are envisioning. So, yeah. And, you know, it's, this is why this is a cool venue for you guys to share your work and see what kind of, you know, response you get. Yeah, opening up the shadows will also bring up the noise. That's true. Technically, that's another issue. But I wouldn't even, yeah, that's important, you know. But more important to me is the aesthetic quality of it. Yeah. If you were on our show with uh, Scott Kelby, you know, he was talking about how people obsess over noise he said you're the only one that's going to notice it you know and you and another photographer but i get it i do i try to i try to handle noise too so anyway that's just a different side note all right let's all take right. a few more and see what we got here here's one from our friend robin mitchell who loves doing his landscape photography uh so one of my hiking spots the red Amphitheater in Colorado, the giant rock formations are the main attraction, but whenever I come to the hillside out of the park, it reminds me of the golden rolling hills of California with those of ways that I ground. Unfortunately, you were cutting in and out through that whole thing. Oh, well, I don't, yeah. oh I'm sorry. Take another run at it. Uh, so one of my close by hiking spots is the Red Rock Amphitheater in Colorado. Oh, yeah. Uh, the giant rock formation. Are the mansion, but whenever I come to the hillside out of the park, it reminds me of the golden rolling hills of California, with yeah. rows of oak trees that I grew up around. Yeah, there you go. I listen. That's a cool image. You know, it's funny when the, when these are first coming on the screen. Sometimes I, you know, I get a first impression, and I'm like, I thought this was a very small, like almost like a clay something, and then a then a then my eyes kind of went to it, oh, no, wait a minute, this isn't a small thing, this is very big, which is a cool thing in itself. But, you know, the punctuation point of that one tree up on the side of the hill is what makes that really work. And I remember one of your other images had the same thing. <clears throat> and then, of course, the depth of the clouds, very moody sky. But also a lot of, you know, bright spots in there. So you've got a whole dynamic range there, which is really cool. But what clearly makes it all like pop together for me is the punctuation point of that one tree. Because all of a sudden you have to go, what am I looking at? Wow, that is really cool. So, and the colors, yeah, I've got a wide range of colors from deep blue, lighter blue, you know, uh, don't really have a total black black, but we have, you know, tonalities in there. And then we've got all, all the brown tones, whole range. It looks like a painting. 
you mm-hmm. know, which I'm, I say that very complimentary. I feel like that's, you know, that has a painterly look to it, which is, you know, definitely makes it an intriguing photograph. Good job. I love that tree up there. Yeah, I know. Isn't that awesome? It's great. All right. Uh, this is a photo from Bethann of her husband. Who is Jared, this guy? Like we mentioned it's his birthday <laughs> today. Happy so birthday. Again, happy birthday. Bethann, you framed him right in between those trees. That's very well done because you don't have any branches touching his head or coming out of the back of his head, even though there's ample opportunity for that. Like if you had moved him just a little bit either way, you'd have branches and trees and stuff. So bravo on that. And, you know, the the framing in the background really helps pull our eyes right to him, which, you know, that's what a portrait's all about. This is an environmental portrait where you're shooting him in an environment where he obviously goes a lot. So you're, you're capturing him right there. And, you know, his face is very well lit. I don't know if you, I, I'm interested in how you did that. Was the sun behind your back? Looks like. You may have even used a reflector. I don't know. I kind of doubt that. I don't see anything sparking in his eyes that would kind of indicate that. But anyway, he's very well lit. The background fades out. You've controlled the depth of field. Yep, you did a good job on not having branches coming out of his head or conflicting in any way. In fact, they're they're enhancing, you know, around him. So good job. And I love the tonality of it, you know, the the browns. It's kind of a very brown in, you know, in the background, but also his skin tone and you know, the fact that he's super well lit works out really well. Good job. And once again, oh. happy birthday, Jared. All right. Uh, here's 29. One. Yeah, 29, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, this is from our good friend, uh, zoologist photographer, uh, Stephen. S- Stephen. Uh, he got this one. He went to the Phoenix Zoo uh, with the intent to see what wild birds might be hanging around. Uh, and... Uh, so this was one that he took while uh, he was at the Phoenix Zoo. Yep, well framed. You know that diagonal line, the uh, you know the tail, you know sticking out is the uh, we have the foreground diagonal line of the branch, and the and the bird there. Excellent use of depth of field. Obviously, you captured that really well, and the whole fr- the whole frame of the diagonal of the bird. You know, that gives us another, we've got two diagonal lines going on here. So that gives us a lot of vitality and a lot of interest. And the texture on its breast, you know, the the texture of those little tiny feathers is really cool. So you've done a great job in processing. And I wonder if you did move the texture slider. I'm finding that more and more useful, by the way. You know, uh, I used to use... Um, uh, you know, uh, why am I just completely forgetting? I've, I've eliminated it from my toolkit so much that... I, I, anyway, I, I use the texture slider a lot, and it does do... I don't know if you did this, but it certainly looks like you might have brought out some of that. Rather than clarity, which is what I was hunting around for, clarity, as Scott Kelby points out, makes it look muddy if you slide it over too much it gives it a muddy quality so i've stopped using clarity and maybe a little bit of clarity but more texture and texture what it does in in lightroom is it just it does help bring out your texture i you may not have had to do that because there's ample texture already there but i'm just curious what is the bird stephen i'm also interested in what we're looking well, at i think here. it's in here like Came in here, but uh, a tailed grackle. A what? He says that he uh, a gra- uh, great gra- tailed grackle. Well, of course it is. Okay, so great tailed grackle, and in, in the zoo, and you've done a great job. You are the zoology photographer, after all, 
I mean, that's, you know, quite a specialty that I do not share with you, but that's well done. Yeah. I have taken uh, animal photographs, but not anywhere to the degree you 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 are. Yeah, we don't use cl clarity. Is kind of like mm, they're, they're probably going to end up taking it out because it really does muddy up your print, your your image. And the last thing I want is mud in my in my images. So great tail. It's the great tailed. Okay, thank you. Great tail Graco. Here we go. Let's just stick it right on there for all of us to see. Um, I like one person uh, was saying that the caption for this is "You talking to me?" <laughs> you talking to me? It's, yeah. That that is what it looks like. That bird's thinking. What you looking at? Yeah, it does look a little irritated, doesn't it? It's got that sort of zone zoned in on your eyes there. Anyway, that's. Female, it's a great tail, not freight tail. Let's, yeah, okay, we got oh, that. Okay. We'll just put that up there. Great tail, there we go. Okay. Well done. Good job. Let's do a few more, and then yeah. i got to get back to editing here. Uh, this one was just submitted by a new member, Ed Barr, just joined during the stream. Uh, a shot from a hike to a frozen waterfall with a buddy last weekend. Is there Olympus? Amazing. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at it because, you know, this could be ice climbing going up this waterfall, which is what climbers do. And it looks like he's got climbing gear on. I can't quite tell. You know, the black and white, the flowing of the of this frozen waterfall is very interesting. The uh, you know, you get this fluid feeling. The only thing I'm hungry for in this image is and and I just feel like there's a little more you could have gotten out of that ex the the person your buddy just like maybe reaching up or some gesture something that you know photography is all about and I've mentioned this before you know the stage is set somebody walks into the frame now now we got to do like nothing in the background is going anywhere so now we just have to wait for that magic moment just capture the expression and the mood the feeling there's some i just feel like something and if it doesn't happen on its own <laughs> unless you're doing photojournalism you are perfectly open to directing your subject I'm not saying you can't do that. Like, hey, you just reach up there a little bit. But that's the only thing I feel like I'm hungry for, something with your subject that, that opens it up a little bit. Because he's a little scrunched in there, you know? It's um, all They're taking a photo. That That's what they're doing. I was wondering it, and he confirmed it in the comments. I think you can see if we zoom in. That's a camera. They've oh, got there, there you go. And a okay. tripod on their back. So that's yeah, probably why so they're so scrunched in because they're, they're, kind of they're trying to stabilize. I just can't see that, you know. So anyway, just keep pressing the shutter. You may even have different frames, you know. And that's kind of what you want to do when you're shooting a subject like this is, you know, a number of different frames. And then you get back, when you process it, you go, that's the one that really, you know, that's the, that's the one that's going to make it work. But... Otherwise, it's perfectly set. Just It's just a matter of time. You know, there's this whole perception thing that goes on. When you see something that's going to happen, it's anticipating. You know, Cartier-Bresson was about capturing the moment, right? It's the decisive moment. And what makes it decisive is something happens. Like there's some motion, geometry, texture, something and it's, as photographers, we just, we just have to be patient sometimes and just keep capturing until you see it. And again, if you don't see it, be a director. Make it happen. It's all in your toolkit, guys, to do these things. All right, let's look at a couple more here. All right. This one, famous. Uh, I know Amy exactly who did this. Yep. yep. We've got your That's brand down, Amy. I, I we love... Did Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, we had a class a couple of weeks ago from David uh, Breyer about branding. 
Branding mm-hmm. means your distinctive quality that differentiates you from everybody else, right? You know, this this can here, LaCroix, has a distinctive, you know, their logo here is right on there. That makes it what it is. Um, every brand has a dis- should have a distinctive quality to it. But we all have our own brand, you know, Canon, right? We all have our own brand. And, the, you know, the more distinctive and the more it differentiates itself from others' brands, the more recognizable you are. And I want to just um, commend you, Amy, for creating your brand. You really, you've really done that. And this is another self-portrait. We yep, wouldn't this know one that. Is titled, it's titled The Death of Henny Penny. Okay, Henny Penny. So you have built your brand. By the way, I'd love to hear some feedback for any of you who were at that uh, class, how that has helped you. I'd like to pass it along to David. So you can leave it in the here or you can leave it in AYP plus might be better. But anyway, yes, Amy. Um, here, my only comment, I, I think this is a great image and you've done a great job. I feel it's a little, like I'd like to get a little more space. I feel like I'm a little, you know, and maybe that's what you're, you know, that's part of what you're trying to convey here. And if it is, then you've done a great job. But I'd love to see a little more space around, you know, this face. That's just me. I, You know, by the way, you know, uh, and I will go off on this for a minute. So David made this point about we have to reevaluate our brands every single day. You know, what is it we're doing? What is it? The, what's the unique thing about us that we're doing? And I wrote this down today about my brand. My brand is advancing your photography. And I wrote these three things down. You probably can't read that. Do you want me to read it to you? So this is like, you know, I told you I use notebooks. Well, I, I stuck this on, a, on my sticky note in my notebook, but then I pulled it out. And I wrote down here the three things that I want to be able to be known for as far as this brand goes. Number one, help people create space. What does that mean? You know, well, we all have to, to be healthy and alive, we have to have more space. Okay, this is why I tell you to go out and take walks, get outside whenever you can. Even creating your own space for your studio, right? That's physical space, but there's also kind of mental or spiritual space. Like what's the space of your photography? Where does it fit? So helping people create more space. I hope I'm doing that for you. This is really my goal. And help people to look and visualize in that space. So it goes in that order. You, in order to visualize something and to look, you have to have some space to look out into. And that, that's not an automatic thing. It just sort of rolls out. You know how you have to observe. Bob Holmes said, many people look, but they don't see. Well, it's because they're not really, they're not even in that space. Have you ever been walking around somewhere and you're totally inside your head and you don't even notice what's going on around you? Or you're in a car and you, you've been driving and you don't even know how you got there? That's because you are not occupying that space. But on the other hand, you go to some beautiful location. I'll I'll switch to this screen here. You go to some beautiful location, the Grand Canyon or Yosemite or, you know, Arches National Park or, you know, national parks are obviously known for giving us a lot of feeling of space. You just take a deep breath and you and you get it all in and then you go what can i capture within this space i mean that's what we do as photographers and the great photographers all tell this story basically they own that space ansel adams pulling over and seeing the moon over half dome kabam i mean he literally owned yosemite i mean that was his place he spent so much time there he knew everything about it they actually named a wilderness after him, the Ansel Adams Wilderness. So instrumental in saving it and, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, 
as part of the conservation effort. But he owned that space. Edward Weston owned the space where I live. I mean, just photographed here so many times. It, it was his space, okay? So once you get your space, then you visualize what you want to do with it. Like, what do I want to do within this space? And then from there, you just create. Like, I'm only trying to encourage people to, to do these three things. How does, how does the whole cycle of photography fit in with that? Well, you got to know your equipment. That's part of your space. That's one of your tools that you use to capture with. If you don't know your equipment, you're not going to be able to get the job done. You've got to be able to edit, right? That's part of your vision, getting your vision across. And then sharing with people means I move something from my space that I saw and I felt, and I'm giving it over to you in your space. That's what we do when we communicate. I'm pretty philosophical, as you can see. I believe that that's the real deal with photography. I mean, it isn't about what, what's the latest piece of equipment. And I can get, look, I can get as interested as anybody else in that, but really only because I think this is a cool tool. This is something that's going to help me do a better job or not. I have tried out cameras that I thought were going to blow me away, and I go, eh, not so much. I don't need to, I don't need to spend all that money and go through a whole new learning curve. It's not going to do the job. So I test out a lot of equipment, and sometimes, you know, I think it's interesting enough to adopt it, but most of the time I don't. Anyway, those are, that's what my brand is all about. AYP is. It's much more than taking photographs, in other words. At the end of the day, I hope to help you advance, not just in your photography, but as a person. That's my goal. How about that? I hope I'm doing that for you. Okay, well, Jared, I think we've come to the end. Thank you again, Amy, for that. And thank yeah. you guys, everybody here. And uh, for joining talking, us. About that, talking about that branding on AYP+. Plus. Oh, yeah, and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe and enable the bell. And by the way, I want to just let you guys know, you've probably noticed we've taken a breather on YouTube for a while. You know, we're stepping back, creating these classes. I've also wanted to reevaluate where we're going, and I, I think I've got that figured out. So in March, probably you'll start seeing us much more active. Dan Milner is going to join us for some shows. I obviously want to get Bob Holmes back and some of our other guests, but I'm also going to give you uh, me going out and photographing and talking about a lot of these things I talk to you here, but showing you what I'm talking about. You know, that's that's going to be coming up here. We're in we're we're going to be into a new season, in other words. So oh, back to you, Jared. What were you saying? I was just saying that you talked about the branding class that we had with AYP Plus, our premium the platform. Uh, That's right. And you should definitely sign up, check that out. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to give away a uh, free month. One of you guys is going to win this. Who is it? Yeah. And I have awesome. done the drawing. And our winner is Saba. Uh, Saba. With his uh, photos of his kid on Halloween. Oh, yeah. So that was, congratulations. Those were very cool. Yep. Awesome. Here I can you want to show that yeah, one again bring that bring that uh, up so congratulations Let's... i'll be reaching out to you on how you can claim your one month free of ayp plus and of course i'll be putting a link to ayp plus uh where you can find out more information uh it's great we've got a class uh we've got a weekly class uh we've got and you can go back and look at the ones so you can go back and check out that branding and figure yeah. out you know some great ways to help build your brand as a photographer, which was an amazing class. And branding is part of sharing here. You notice I have, we are in the sharing portion of the cycle of photography today with critiquing. Branding is how you people visualize you. You have to visualize yourself, but you also have to think of what do I want them, how, how do I want them to visualize me? Like me wearing this hat as part of my brand now. Um, that's really important. And listen, you guys, here's the thing. I love to all have you in AYP+. Plus. I really believe this, this community is building. We're just at the beginning stage of this whole thing, right? 
and we're refining it and, and really working all the time to make make it even better you know not just adding content but how we present it to you and you know I feel like we're making good strides with that so you will find things there you're not going to find anywhere else like me taking a, a interview that I've done with Bob Holmes apart and, and you know really unpacking it so you can see exactly what he's talking about or Ansel Adams for that matter you know pretty pretty major people here you're not going to see this on YouTube and you're not going to see it anywhere else except in a live workshop that I would do which I hope we can get back to in this 2021 and I'll let you guys know because I'd love to see some of you in person that would be so cool we'll do them here in Carmel because we've got ample room for amazing photographs and also to sit down at the end of the day and have a drink together and go to a great restaurant which I know all the restaurant people in town so you know we, we could have a great time there okay Jared I think we've covered everything for now right yep oh one last thing if you have not got a copy physical copy of this book advancing your photography this is the new edition 2020 just published it's got a few changes in it but you should have the physical copy this is a good book <laughs> I spent a lot of time writing it refining it it's got great illustrations it's the size that you can put in your camera bag that's why we made it that size it's really high quality printing too you're not going to get the same feeling if you have the ebook. You need to have a physical book. I am a great reader of books and a great marker of books. I put margin notes and I highlight and I can take a book and make it so that I can go back to it anytime and find exactly what I need. There's a whole art form to that. Do not do all this underline. You know, I get books out of the library sometimes and half the book is underlined. Well, why why are you doing that first of all why are you doing that to a library book and second of all if you underline every page there's it all means the same thing so there's an art form to that i will give a class someday but jared put the link in there you can get not only this book for the price of shipping and handling which is okay half price but you can make another click and buy these books too for half price basically you can get all three this is a trilogy all three books international anywhere in the world we finally figured it out we can ship to you anywhere in the world okay if you already own these books get another set and give them away to somebody I'm not kidding it helps me help you and I want you guys to have these physical books. It's so important. Thank you, Eric. You got yours. Um, and tell your friends. Tell your friends. Look, at, we need a lot more people on these platforms, on the YouTube channel, AYP, you know, Facebook, AYP+. Plus. And that comes from you guys sharing. Okay, see that right there? See that sharing sign right there? Why am I backwards? Okay, whatever. It's right there. <laughs> Share, share, share. That's where you're going to feel good, too, when you share not only your own work, but how you can advance your photography. Okay. That's about it, right? Am I missing anything, yeah, Jared? That's it. I think we got it. Okay, one last thing. Remember to subscribe. I already told you that, but I'm telling you again. Enable the bell. And say it with me. Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Love you guys. Thanks for joining. Stay tuned for a lot more, and we'll see you guys soon. Have a great weekend.